first, we're continuing with Sheila Kohatkar, staff writer at The New Yorker and the author of Black Edge, Inside Information, Dirty Money and the Quest to Bring Down the Most Wanted Man on Wall Street. Explain the term Black Edge, Sheila. So, uh, it's important to understand that hedge funds are driven by information. And if you're trading in the stock market each day on a kind of a short-term, speculative basis, the better the information is that you have, the more money you're going to make. That's the general philosophy. So everyone is out there trying to get good, usable information. Um, inside the hedge fund that I, I write about a lot in this book, SAC Capital, you know, they had different categories of information. There was white edge, which is publicly available information that anyone can get, like information that is in an SEC filing that a company makes not very useful to a trader, because everyone already has that. There's gray edge, which is um, in, the, in the gray zone. It's, it might be something that an executive at the company told you, but it wasn't entirely clear what they meant. You're not quite sure. You're sort of—you you might have to talk to your legal counsel before you can trade on that information. And then there's black edge, which is clearly material, non-public information, inside information. For example, access to confidential drug trial results before they are released. Um, and a person could make a lot of money trading on that kind of information. Well, one of the fascinating things about your book, aside from the fact it's a great storytelling, uh, is, the, is the way you, you uh, describe the evolution of the hedge fund world from basically a strategy of investment to, an, in essence, uh, totally unregulated uh, gambling, a sort of like a dark world of, of, of Wall Street in general, where anything goes and where the illegal insider information became such a valuable commodity in that world. Well, so there are there are thousands of hedge funds now, and of course they all do different things, and some of them are fine, and some of them are not so fine. But really, the the whole idea of a hedge fund began decades ago. Uh, the idea was that you could create an investment fund where you could hedge your investments. So if you went long certain stocks, you could also short other stocks, which means you were betting that the price would go down, and that would kind of offset your losses if the market went down. You know, so you were kind of hedging your bets, and this was attractive to wealthy investors, and the regulators decided that if only wealthy investors were using these funds, they would give them more latitude to take risk in the market, so they could borrow more money, they could do this shorting. And it started off as this little niche thing, but um, it was so successful, and many of the people running these funds became so wealthy, I mean, billions of dollars at early ages. Well, as you say, Stephen Cohen was reporting 30 uh, percent <laughs> returns every year, wasn't it? Yeah, he was. Year after year, his, his hedge fund, SAC Capital, posted 30, 50, 70 percent in its early days, 100 percent, and investors were fighting to get in. And uh, by the time the events that I write about in this book really come to, come to a head, you know, he had only had one down year, which was 2008, financial crisis year. So uh, we don't have much time, and you spent hundreds of pages um, that were hard not to read, to say the least. Um, uh, Telling us the story of SAC Capital and Stephen Cohen. Tell us what happened. Well, ultimately, uh, the FBI decided they were going to try and crack down on the hedge fund industry, and they kept hearing the name SAC all over the place from different informants on wiretaps. So they started to look into it. And over a period of several years, they, d they used the same techniques they'd used to investigate the mob. They ended up charging a handful of people who worked at SAC, and there was a lot of— SAC, Stephen A. Cohen. So it stands for Stephen A. Cohen. Those are his initials. So Stephen A. Cohen's hedge fund, SAC Capital, it was a $15 billion fund at its peak, very powerful force on the market. And um, ultimately, uh, the government had to make a decision about whether they were going to charge Cohen himself. And this is where he becomes, I think, sort of the man of our time, because there was this huge debate. The press was watching. A lot of anticipation. Is this is this huge Wall Street titan going to possibly face jail time? Like and, the guy on the corner who steals ten dollars. Exactly. Unlike the unlike the low level drug dealer who's definitely going to jail. I mean, there was a huge debate about this. Everybody was waiting to see, and the government ultimately decided they did not have the evidence they needed to definitively prove that Steve Cohen knew this illegal activity was taking place. And that is true. They did not have a witness. They did not have a wiretap. They did not have anything that definitively showed that Steve Cohen knew this was going on, even though the circumstantial evidence looked quite bad. So they ended up charging the company instead, SAC Capital. And Mr. Cohen ended up paying almost $2 billion in fines. And the hedge fund was shut down. But he uh, can return to the industry in 2018. 
And I would argue that this this story is important for everyone because we all have money <coughs> in the stock market now. I mean, Americans have largely been pushed to put their retirement savings in the stock market. And what you see through this story is that there are two markets. There's one. So is, is the moral of the story then that unlike a previous era when Milken and others uh, were convicted, that that uh, the the biggest of these Wall Street giants now have figured out a way to be able to get around the law? Well, after the financial crisis, the same thing happened. We did not see any senior level bankers uh, even facing the possibility of going to jail, and they largely resolved the criminal activity from that. Uh, scandal through fines. So I think this has caused a lot of frustration for the American public, well, who— Well, clearly, Stephen Cohen's lawyers were very good. Um, yes. Kevin O'Connor, it was reported by Bloomberg in November, the general counsel for— um, for Stephen Cohen's investment firm, oversaw the staff picks for the Justice Department as a member of President Donald Trump's transition team, um, according to a chart named by Bloomberg. I thought that was just about a perfect ending to the story, based on the way things are going. But I, I believe—I mean, that was reported, and it seemed to be only for a brief time. But, yes, I, I, it does appear that people from Cohen's world and his industry have now moved into Washington, and they are directing economic— policy and regulatory policy. And this is something we all need to be concerned about. And um, I don't think it's going to resolve the frustrations of the voters who put Trump in that position. Do you think Donald Trump will ever release his tax returns? Uh, it doesn't look like it, but, I, I mean, it's. I, I think it's a scandal. I, I can't believe he hasn't had to do it, but, but look where he's gotten without releasing them. So um, I, I don't see any incentive for him to do so now, frankly. And, and his uh, his claim that the American people don't care about this? Well, obviously, it depends on who you ask. A lot of people do care. And uh, that kind of transparency is really important. I mean, it's, it's a problem when we do not know, as a people, who our president is financially beholden to. And ultimately, most stories, I think, in Washington come down to money. So we do not know uh, where the money trail goes, and we should have that information. And it's it's very upsetting that well, we don't. Well, I hear there are plans for an April 15th um, Trump taxes march on Washington. So we'll see what happens. Sheila Kohatkar, I want to thank you for being with us. Staff Thanks. writer at The New Yorker, author of the new book, Black Edge, Inside Information, Dirty Money, and the Quest to Bring Down the Most Wanted Man on Wall Street.